When we think of Disney's animated movies, we think of child-friendly stories full of princesses, adorable talking animals, and villains that always get their comeuppance. From Cinderella to Pinocchio to Beauty and the Beast, these stories are our modern fairy tales. While many include upsetting elements like the demise of a parent or duplicious baddies, good always prevails in the end. The original stories the movies are based on aren't quite so uplifting, though. They often include some genuinely disturbing plot points that parents would be horrified to share with their children. In this video, we're exploring the dark original stories that were adapted into some of the most beloved Disney classics. Between bad behavior, violence, and depressing endings, these origin stories are not for the faint of heart. Snow White and the Seven Dwarves was the first animated movie Walt Disney produced way back in 1937, and the film is still beloved today. The movie's known for its entertaining dwarves, its innocent princess, and its jealous evil queen. And the fairy tale it's based on, by the Brothers Grimm, contains those elements too. It even includes a magic mirror that repeatedly reports that Snow White is more beautiful than the queen. However, the Grimm version is much darker. In the movie, the evil queen gives Snow the poisoned apple and calls it a day. In the Grimm's version, she goes after the girl twice before her success with the poison apple. When the dwarves can't revive Snow White, they place her in a glass coffin and watch over her for years until a prince comes along. This prince doesn't wake Snow White with a true love's kiss, however. After gazing at her inert form, he becomes enamored with her, so he asks the dwarves to let him take her with him. He explains that now that he's seen her, he can't live without gazing upon her. Instead of telling the creep to get lost, the dwarves allow it. When the prince's servants lift the coffin to carry Snow White away, they stumble and the jolt forces the piece of poison apple out of her throat. Inevitably, the prince proposes marriage on the spot and Snow White agrees. There's still the evil queen to consider, though. In the Disney movie, the evil queen falls off a cliff, which is traumatic in and of itself. Her fate in the Grimm's fairy tale is much worse, though. In that version, she's invited to Snow White's wedding. When she gets there, she finds her punishment has already been prepared. She's forced to dance in red-hot iron slippers until she loses her life. What a way to go! Another Disney princess audiences adore is Belle from Beauty and the Beast. In the movie, Belle is bookish and brave and unwilling to settle for the first man who comes along to the confusion of the townsfolk. Yet when the Beast captures Belle's father, she willingly trades her freedom for his. At first, she's horrified by the Beast, but as she gets to know him, they fall in love, leading to his transformation back into a prince. It's a story about looking beyond the surface to see the real person underneath. In many ways, the Disney version takes its cues from the tale written by Jean-Marie Le Prince de Beaumont in the 1700s. There are some details that never made it into the movie, though. One of the most noteworthy is that Belle has two awful older sisters. When the Beast allows Belle to go home to visit them and they see the evidence of the luxurious life she's now leading, they get jealous. So they decide to delay her return to the Beast in hopes he'll get angry and eat her. Spoiler alert, the plan doesn't work. As punishment for their treachery, the sisters are turned into living statues. They're condemned to witness their sister's happiness while serving as decoration for her castle. In the Disney version of Pinocchio, the title puppet is an innocent soul who relies on Jiminy Cricket for guidance. His creator, the gentle Geppetto, desperately wants a son and wishes that Pinocchio would become a real boy. While there are some scary parts, like boys turning into donkeys and a whale swallowing Pinocchio whole, things work out in the end. The original story by Carlo Collodi is a whole lot darker. Collodi's version initially appeared as a serial in an Italian newspaper. The author wanted to illustrate the consequences of being bad to his child readers. So Pinocchio was anything but sweet and innocent. Instead, Pinocchio was a real jerk who misbehaves and does terrible things at every opportunity. He's horrible to Geppetto and constantly gets into trouble. The addition, Jiminy Cricket doesn't play a critical role of Pinocchio's conscious that he does in the movie. Instead, when the Cricket attempts to give Pinocchio a piece of his mind, Pinocchio squashes him with a mallet. Yikes! Disney's Tangled tells the story of Rapunzel, a girl who was raised by Mother Gothel in an inescapable tower. Rapunzel doesn't realize that Gothel took her away from her royal family as a baby. When a bandit named Flynn breaks into the tower, though, she accompanies him on adventures and learns the truth about her royal heritage. The grim fairy tale that the movie is based on isn't quite so rosy. First of all, Rapunzel isn't a kidnapped royal. She's actually the price her parents had to pay for her father sneaking into a sorceress's garden to get Rapunzel lettuce for her mother. Also, the man who eventually finds her isn't the bandit Flynn, but a prince who's attracted to her voice. 
They conspire to get her out of the tower. When Gothel gets wind of their plans, however, she maroons Rapunzel in an isolated, desolate place. Then, when the prince comes to see Rapunzel in the tower but only finds Gothel, he's overcome with grief and jumps. He escapes with his life but falls into a bed of thorns which blind him. Pro tip, don't lead with your face when falling into thorns. The prince ends up wandering in grief for years until he finally wanders into the place where Rapunzel was stranded. By then, Rapunzel isn't living in a terrible existence there all by herself. She had twins and is raising them in squalor. When she sees the prince after such a long time, she's overjoyed. Two of her tears drop into his eyes and the prince's blindness is magically cured. It's only then, after all that, that Rapunzel, the prince, and their children make it to the prince's kingdom to live happily ever after. Cinderella is another classic princess tale. In the Disney version, Cinderella's stepmother and stepsisters treat her like a slave and won't allow her to go to the ball. However, Cinderella retains her optimism throughout the story, has loyal friends in the form of mice and birds, and even lands the prince. The version by the Brothers Grimm isn't quite so heartwarming. Some of the details are just odd. Instead of a fairy godmother, Cinderella gets an assist from a bird in the hazel tree that grows by her mother's grave. At least the bird has a keen fashion sense. After dazzling the prince with her beauty, she leaves a golden shoe behind. And just like in the movie, the prince searches the land for the woman whose foot fits the shoe. In this story, the evil stepmother is willing to do whatever it takes to get one of her daughters married to the prince. So when the shoe doesn't fit her first daughter, she insists she cut off her own toe. When the prince realizes what happened, the second daughter tries on the shoe. Her heel doesn't fit, so the stepmother insists that she cut it off. If that weren't bad enough, while attending Cinderella's wedding, pigeons peck out the sister's eyes. Pocahontas has the rare distinction of being the only Disney animated feature based on a true story from American history. Disney took some serious liberties with the facts, however. In the movie, Pocahontas is a Native American who falls in love with British settler John Smith. In real life, Mota Ake, whose nickname was Pocahontas, was the daughter of a Powhatan chief. She lived with her tribe in Virginia and was only around 10 when Smith and the English arrived. Smith was captured by Pocahontas' tribe and she prevented his execution. That was likely the pair's only real connection, though. It's the remainder of Pocahontas' story that's truly tragic. She's captured by the English. In exchange for her release, she agrees to marry a tobacco planner named John Rolfe. A couple of years later, Rolfe takes her to England and parades her around as a symbol of how the Europeans could tame the New World. Then on a trip back to Virginia, she passes away. The cause remains unknown. Pocahontas was only 21. Sleeping Beauty from 1959 includes an innocent love story, a terrible curse, and one of the best villains ever, the evil fairy Maleficent. While the Disney version of the story is based on the tale by Charles Perrault, his version is an adaptation of an earlier tale. And that story by Giambattista Basile is seriously disturbing. In Basile's version, called Sun, Moon, and Talia, Talia also goes into a coma after encountering a spinning wheel. There's no curse involved in this instance. Talia simply succumbs to a, a splinter. Her father moves her body to a fancy palace in the country and leaves her there. Later, a passing king comes upon Talia. After appreciating her beauty, he appreciates her lifeless body in other ways. Then he returns home and forgets all about it. Talia gives birth to twins, and one of them sucks the splinter from her finger, causing Talia to finally wake up. Talia is kind of confused, as anyone would be. Eventually, though, the king comes back and discovers Talia and the two children. He's overjoyed at learning that Talia is awake and he's a father. Unfortunately, he's already married to another woman. Jealous, the queen sends for Talia and her children. She plans to throw Talia on a fire while cooking and feeding her twins to the king. When the king discovers her plan, though, it's the queen who ends up in the fire. In what's supposed to pass as a happy ending, the king then marries Talia. In the pantheon of Disney animated movies, The Hunchback of Notre Dame isn't exactly considered a laugh riot. After all, the movie starts with bad guy Frollo taking out Quasimodo's mother and almost dispatching him as a baby. In the course of the movie, Quasimodo saves Esmeralda's life from the awful Frollo. Ultimately, Quasimodo must satisfy himself with just being friends with Esmeralda, but at least he's accepted by the outside world. In the original novel written by Victor Hugo, however, there isn't even a hint of a happy ending. Hugo is the same person who wrote Les Miserables and like that story, this one revels in unending misery. In this Hugo story, Frollo frames Esmeralda and she's sentenced to be hanged. Quasimodo fails to save her and instead watches her demise. While he pushes Frollo off the roof of the cathedral like he does in the movie, this time it's because Frollo laughs as Esmeralda's life ends. 
Afterwards, Quasimodo goes to Esmeralda's grave and remains there until he starves. It's a sad ending for everyone involved. If that weren't enough, there's this morbid coda. Years later, Esmeralda's grave is opened and both her and Quasimodo's skeletons are found entwined. They turn to dust when someone tries to separate them. When you encounter a story called The Little Mermaid, you tend to imagine frolicking, fishy fun. Unless you happen to be Hans Christian Andersen, the author of the original story. In Disney's version, the Little Mermaid Ariel goes to the sea witch Ursula and exchanges her voice for legs. She then has three days to get to the prince to give her true love's kiss. Ultimately, Ariel and Prince Eric fall in love, team up to take down Ursula, and get married. Things aren't nearly so cheery for Anderson's mermaid. In his story, the Little Mermaid goes to the local sea witch, too. She exchanges her tongue for legs. If that weren't bad enough, the legs she receives gives her nothing but pain. Not only is the splitting of her tail excruciating, when she walks every step she feels like she's treading on shattered glass. That doesn't stop the prince from demanding that the mermaid dance for him. Oh, God. <laughs> Like the film, if the mermaid wants to remain human, she must get the prince to fall in love with her. Unlike the film, if she fails, she'll lose her life. Not only does the mermaid fail, the prince marries someone else. Oh, this is so sad. In an attempt to save the mermaid, her sisters go to the sea witch and procure a knife. If she plunges the knife into the prince, she'll turn back into a mermaid instead of meeting her end. She can't bring herself to do it, though. Instead, she returns to the sea and dissolves into foam. Talk about depressing. Which of these stories did you find the most disturbing? Do you know of any other Disney movies that were based on messed up origin stories? Let us know in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give us a like to let us know. And thanks for watching.